Turn the lights back on. Wow. Retro Electro Tech. When real audio ruled the world. Hello there. This is Ernest with Retro Electro Tech. And on the bench is the guts, or to be more specific, output board and main amplifier section, along with 12 power transistors that I pulled from the heat sink here. And this is from a PV XRD 680 Plus powered mixer from the early 90s. Now, when I say powered mixer, I'm not talking about the kind that you use in your kitchen with a mixing bowl to make up your pancake batter. Of course not. I'm talking about this unit here. Now, this came to me with a customer complaint of no signal on one side and that it's blowing fuses. Otherwise, I was told that one side is still functioning. So, I began checking all visible wiring and components, starting at the power supply, and what I was looking for were those obvious red flag indicators, you know, stuff that looked or smelled toasty or otherwise not in typical form. Now that being said, I located these two open or shall I say blown 10 amp fuses that certainly performed their duty well. They responded to an obvious fault situation, so again, they did their job. Now there's a total of four fuses two per amp section that interconnect the secondaries of two power transformers to this 304S output board. Um, I suspected the problem was in the main amp section here, and I did find two shorted power transistors, this one here, and this one here, along with a transistor that was difficult to get into calibration on the tester, and it was also showing a reduction in gain compared to the rest of the good transistors here. So one thing also too that I'll mention is the shorted transistors, the blown fuses, of course, correspond to the dead half of the uh, amp. So anyways, as you can see here, I pulled all the transistors from the um, heat sink, you know, out of circuit to perform a more accurate gain and leakage test the latter of which needs to be performed out of circuit on account of uh, false readings that can be obtained by circuit resistances, etc. So what I'm going to do is quickly show how a good transistor and shorted transistor behave and read using one of my old school testers. Okay, this class of tester does a fairly decent job of delivering approximate gain and leakage readings especially when such a tester is brought into spec and properly calibrated, which is what I do. I'm very particular about that. And not to mention, if you understand its limitations, then you know, you know what you're getting. So let's go ahead and get the uh, test of this first transistor underway. Um, let me go ahead and actually turn it off and let it settle. Matter of fact, this needle here is not going to settle exactly where it should because I have this, um, tester tilted up so that you can see the, the display better. Now this first um, power transistor is a, a Motorola and the pinout is um, collector, which is the case. We have the base and the emitter. Okay. So let me go ahead and turn it to PNP. Okay. And we need to calibrate it. As you can see here, the um, cal, okay, there's a line. So let's go ahead and tweak it a little bit with this uh, calibration knob. And get it pretty much right on that line. Okay, good enough. I'm not working on avionics for NASA or anything. So I'll go ahead and hit this test button. And this shows us a DC beta of close to eight. So, you know, we're in the upper 70s, close to 80 on the gain, which corresponds to the rest of the um, PNP testers that are testing good. Okay. Now let's do the current leakage test from collector to emitter. And that's nice and low the way we want it. Okay. Collector to base. 
nice and low. Okay. Now let me turn this off. And then I'll get the next transistor hooked up. Um, I'm going to do a shorted one now and show you the behavior of it. Okay, I have the shorted transistor on the tester. It's another Motorola PNP transistor. And um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the selector here to PNP. I want you to watch that needle. Clearly shorted. And if this was an open, this uh, needle wouldn't even deflect if the transistor was open. And um, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go ahead and also show you the um, shorted transistor on the Fluke uh, multimeter and show you how it tests. Actually, before we take a look at the shorted or at a shorted transistor on this uh, multimeter, which is in diode test mode, let's go ahead and look at a good transistor and see what it should be doing. This one here is an NPN, so we want to place our positive lead here at the base, okay? And then we're going to check the forwarding voltage uh, of the base emitter junction here, and it should be in the 0.6 range. There you go. Now the uh, base to collector junction same now we shouldn't get anything here and we're not here or here okay this is a good transistor or at least the junctions here are testing as they should okay here's the bad NPN so let me get the positive lead on the base Okay, dead short, the uh, base to emitter junction, base to, base to collector, okay, and let's go ahead and we shouldn't be conducting there, shouldn't be conducting here, here, okay, so clearly this uh, um, transistor here is kaput. Okay, so there you have it. Additionally, I'm going to be going through the rest of this unit and uh, testing some more components, especially around the power supply board and driver board. I will also be replacing some electrolytic power caps uh, just due to the age of this unit, especially within the power supply and output sections. I also want to check diode function more thoroughly as well as resistor values to make sure everything is within spec. Again, especially on this board here, which electrically speaking takes more punishment, it's where most of the heat happens. So, <clears throat> before concluding this video, I want to mention on the subject of heat. As I start reinstalling the power transistors to this heat sink here, I will be applying a very high quality, thin and even layer of thermal paste uh, to the mounting surfaces of all 12 of these transistors here. Um, I did notice some surface areas where the paste appeared too thin and even partially void. So proper application, you know, it goes without saying, is really important for thermal regulation, especially when this amp gets pumping. So we don't, bottom line, we just don't want things heating up more than, more than they need to. So, um, once I get this unit powered up, of course, I'm going to inject a test signal into it, confirm that there's no other issues. If there is, well, I'll address them. And, uh, and then, of course, I'm going to get it back to its owner and back into service. So stay tuned for a very brief part two video showing this uh, powered mixer operational. And thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. This is a poor man's shoe production.